long day. Film day. You started that already? Yeah. Film day. This was an unexpected film day. My. Yeah, that's why I'm wearing sweatpants and moccasins. We were supposed to film yesterday, so I showed up with like work pants and boots. And we didn't work. film yesterday. I know. So yeah, filming day. Uh, headed to my brother's shop. Uh, he said he has a Buick with a 5 volt reference circuit code. That's all I know. My brother is not even at the shop today, and uh, we're going to try to help him out because he got a couple things going on and he needs our help. So we'll see see how it goes. Yeah, thanks for making me five feet tall. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't <laughs> think anybody was gonna notice that. Did you get this? Yeah. Are we good? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, at my brother's shop, I don't know if you're including that intro in the. Are you including that intro in the car? Or should I intro it again? Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with Caleb Danner behind the camera as usual at my brother's shop as usual, and uh, today we're working on a 2014 Buick Encore, and I don't know anything about it. My brother called me and said that there is a five volt reference circuit fault code in memory. So that's all I know. Unfortunately, he is not here. So I don't even know uh, the vehicle history or anything like that, but it's a 2014 Encore with a 1.4 liter engine. We switched to the um, Varus today. We, we did a recording. We, we've been um, fighting this 2018 Duramax with uh, some CAN network issues and and we had about a two and a half hour recording on the Autel and uh, we found out the hard way, it looks like the Autel limits the maximum uh, file size of a screen recorder. So it was like 3.8 gig and then it just stopped. And I've t it's done that to me twice now and I'm, I'm frustrated with it. We'll, we uh, downloaded a separate recorder for the Autel um, that uh, should be better and we've used that on the IM608 for those of you interested, it's called Mobizen, M-O-B-I-Z-E-N. Mobizen is a screen recorder that we've been using on the Android devices. It works works really well. So, But I'm using the Varus today, and uh, let's see what we got. We'll just do a code scan of all the systems. 5-volt reference 2 circuit. So we need to find out what all is on that one for sure. Radio code, I'm not worried about this cellular, cellular phone microphone circuit. There's a fix it button on here, Caleb. Should I push it? Well, that just fixes it, right? <laughs> yeah, if I push this fix it button, it's gonna fix it. All right, so just the uh, just the one engine code. Um, the OBD2 code, sensor reference voltage B, so that's the same, that's just the, the generic version, the P0651. Yep, P0651, so the, just the definitions are different. I just heard the car kind of stumble there for a second. All right, so that's it. What's the fix it button do? I'm gonna push it. I don't even know what it does. I've never, done it. I've never picked the fix it button. So the fix it says, it's just a tip for the code. Reference circuit two, code setting conditions. This DTC will set when the ECM is determined a short to ground or voltage on any of the five volt reference circuits. Sweet. Uh, possible causes failed ECM. Uh, two, you could have multiple component failures for this particular reference circuit. That's a horrible possible causes. Uh, with key on engine off, now check all five volt reference circuit status readings. Yeah, that wasn't all that helpful, but it did give me a, at least a little bit of info. All right, so I'm going into my engine data and I, uh, I'm hoping for a data parameter for our reference circuit just to see what we have. I picked sensor data. I don't know if that'll be the right one or not. Looks like maybe four reference circuits on this one, Caleb. 5 volt ref one, 5 volt ref two, 5 volt ref three, and 5 volt ref four, and all four of them right now are showing five volts. Um, I think maybe what we can do before we get, we get lost in this is um, we're gonna take this for a quick test drive to see if we see any of these drop out. This would be one that a technical service bulletin search, you know, something like that would be helpful too. 
mainly because it, it's not doing it right now. And it said, um, I think it said reference two, which would be the bottom right. Intermittents are really tough, man. They really are. You know, we've had our share of intermittents lately, you know what I mean? It just hasn't been hasn't been fun because we haven't been able to recreate them. We've been getting, I don't want to say getting our asses kicked by this Duramax with the CAN network fault. I think I mentioned that. If I didn't, we're, Caleb and I are, are uh, in the middle of a 2018 Chevy Silverado with a Duramax with a high-speed CAN network one fault. And uh, we're just having a hard time recreating it. We think we have it nailed down, though. So we'll bring you we'll bring you guys that footage soon. Most likely, that will be a premium video. I need bumps. I need something here. All right, test drive is not helping. So wiring diagram is going to be key because I need to know what all is on reference circuit two, and then we're going to do some visual inspections of the harness and components for reference circuit two, and then maybe see if there's any type of bulletins or anything uh, related to this fault. This uh, engine control module has four internal five volt reference circuits. Each internal reference circuit provides external five volt reference circuits for more than one sensor. Short to ground, short to voltage, or one external five volt ref circuit can affect all components connected to the same internal five volt ref. Standard stuff. I've been teaching this for years and years and years. The only difference with this car is it has four of them. So the advantages of that is one shorted sensor doesn't shut the entire car down. Right? That's the difference, Caleb. Like we've seen shorted references where the car is just completely dead. So conditions for running, ignition voltage greater than 6.4. Uh, ECM detects, this is conditions for setting, ECM detects short to ground or, or voltage on any of the five volt reference circuits for greater than a half a second. Yeah, all right. Here we go, diagnostic aids. This is what we were just reading up there. So uh, 651, this is the one we wanna focus on. So 651, the five volt reference two circuit provides five volts to the sensors listed below. Uh, brake pedal position. Um, it, this does not have a clutch pedal position because that's manual transmission. So brake pedal position, crankshaft position, intake manifold pressure, and air temp sensor, which I believe is one sensor on this. So we, we only have three different sensors. Brake pedal, crank, intake manifold, pressure, slash temperature. I believe the MAP sensor contains the intake air temp sensor on this model. I believe so. All right. Um, and what do we have here? Schematic reference. Yeah, we'll use that. Operate the vehicle with, oh yeah, check your freeze frame data. Something I didn't do, let's do that. This will just give me an idea of when this set. So we have two different freeze frame captures. This was at 1300 RPM. Intake air was shown 80 degrees. Remember the intake air was mentioned. That's why the map sensor shown 18.6. That's these are values though, not voltage. So values can be substituted. However, in OBD2 and in global, they cannot be. So this should be accurate data. It looks like when this code set. Check out reference two. So here's reference one, reference two reference three, reference four, they're all showing five volts. <laughs> so the moment it set the freeze frame data capture um, to the moment where it took this snapshot of the data, it had already fixed itself. So the, the, the fault is not there, even though it says under the reference circuit status, it says there is a fault, but there is not at the time of this capture. This helps me really in no way other than no, it may be engine temperature. How long were they driving this? So it was 77 degrees of ambient air, 150 degrees of engine temperature. So they were not driving it uh, very long. So maybe, maybe that helps. Let's see, were we accelerating or decelerating? Because maybe, I'm just thinking about the brake uh, pedal switch. We'll, we'll check the second one. Not that this is gonna help us, but Pretty cool that it has a lot more of the data parameters. I, I didn't think it was gonna show us 
the reference stuff. I thought it'd just be global data. Yeah, same kind of thing. It's really not all that helpful. We have our reference one, reference two, reference three, reference four, all showing five volts. Status of all of them showing okay, except for reference two. This is the exact same engine temperature and exact same um, outside air temperature. So 150 on the ECT, 77 on ambient. 80 degrees on the intake air, that's a little bit warmer. So just looking again at the circuit system verification, ML not displayed. Yeah, look at your freeze frame failure records. We just did that. Yeah, there's not a whole lot more we can do other than some visual inspections. I need a wiring diagram to, to do that so I know where I'm looking. Five volt ref and low reference bus one and two. This is a factory diagram. Brake pedal position, crank position, turbo boost intake air temp sensor. I did see something with turbo, turbo charger boost. So I was, you know, I was calling that the map sensor. It is a combination piece. That's it, just those three. And I always think of heat and vibration. So turbo charger boost pressure sensor. I don't know that that would necessarily be, you know, heat as I was just stating, but brake pedal, crank, turbo boost, intake air. Let's uh, let's go just take a peek under the hood real quick, Caleb. And um, well, wait, there's one other thing I can do here right now, which is I just want to look at my reference circuits while I'm messing with the brake. Since the brake pedal position sensor is on the circuit, reference two is the one we want to be focused on. Just messing with the brake pedal with my foot. Nope. All right, let's go under the hood and take a look. So loud those GDI injectors are. If you do that, I gotta pee real quick. Hey, Caleb, you suck. As you're editing me peeing. No! Ah! All right, um, one component I could point out to you, Caleb, is this guy right here. That's my map sensor slash intake air temp sensor, I believe. And then according to the scan tool, it has a separate boost pressure sensor. And I'm not really sure where that lives at the moment. So if I'm doing some visuals, we want to watch our reference to circuit. I'm just tapping on the connector of the map. Kind of look at the harness, see where that guy goes, being careful not to move it too much. If anybody's wondering what the loud clicking is, that's just standard gas direct injection stuff there. The high pressure pumps are noisy, the injectors are real noisy. I'm just looking at points of contact on this harness. So just on my visual inspections, I noticed the harness, this harness right here, should be in this groove, it's not. So someone was down in here is what that tells me maybe. Um, just an area to look at, and then the harness should also, there's another one right here that's supposed to, right there, where I'm pointing to it with my middle finger. See the, the U-shaped clip that it should sit in? It's not. Not that that's our problem, but it's just, initial visual um, on that and I want to focus on that just a little bit more and that's what I'm poking at down here it's tough to have the camera in my hand down here at the same time and what I want to do I want to watch this reference circuit and not really much for that harness to hit on even with it not connected properly okay that's a that's a non-issue in my opinion Unless it was hitting right here. This should be down here like that. I hope I didn't just ruin my chances of finding it. Intermittence, man, intermittence. 
All right, so location of the crank sensor is gonna be important for me, and then location of the boost pressure sensor. Forget about the guided component test sometimes. So is this a VIN 8 or VIN B? I need to check the VIN here real quick. Yeah, it's a B. I'm only seeing a manifold absolute pressure sensor here. I don't see a boost pressure. Maybe it is only one sensor. So where's the crank? Component info is part, okay, the reluctor wheel is part of the crankshaft. So if it's part of the crankshaft, it's gonna go into the side of the block. It's not gonna be around the crank pulley, I don't think. I mean, maybe it is. So component location, left side of the vehicle, rear of engine behind the starter motor. <laughs> That's gonna be like, put the car up in the air to look at that. Then I need to see my boost pressure sensor too. They're only showing the map sensor as a three wire. I hate familiarizing myself on camera. It makes for like just a long video that doesn't need to be. Six pages, six pages of shit. All right, turbocharger bypass solenoid. I'm looking for a turbo or boost pressure sensor. Multi-function intake air temp sensor. Yeah, that's got a pressure sensor inside of it. That's the one that has like intake air one, two, and three. I wonder if that also contains the boost pressure sensor. I don't know. I'll have to find out. Oh no, it's part of the mass airflow sensor. So starting, I'm reading right to left here in the edit scale of starting with what's all part of this. It says temp sensor signal to the right, then low ref, pressure sense five volt ref. What pressure? Press sense signal, intake sense control, mass airflow sense signal. So there's a pressure sensor in there too, but is that my boost pressure sensor? Is part of the, part of the mass airflow or part of the Multi-function intake air sensor. It's on engine intake air duct. That'd be this one right here. And it said map and intake air. Turbocharger boost intake air temp sensor. That's the one on engine intake air duct. So maybe that's the one I just pointed to. This one's four wires. Let's see how many wires we have. That one's more than four. That's got a whole bunch. See all the wires down in there? You got at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight wires. Can you see them? Like I'm looking right, right in here. All right, that's not my guy then. It says on engine intake air duct. That's the only sensor I see. Oh, there it is over here. All right, that's my guy right there. Should be. Low ref, five volt ref, so it doesn't tell me which ref is which in this diagram, but that's okay. Five volt ref and then pre-turbo air temp pressure signal. And that is a combination turbocharger boost and intake air temperature sensor. So then I'll look at that harness. Let's see where she goes. I don't know why I got the engine like super freaking hot here. I'm just wiggling harnesses, Caleb. Not a whole lot I can really show you at the moment. I need to lift this. Above the starter. If there's a wiring problem back here, I'm gonna point to, to it and show Danner and say good luck. Cause this is stuffed back here. I don't, I, there's no way I'm gonna even be able to point out the crank sensor to you on this. And that harness I was pointing out earlier with the two brackets that it wasn't attached to, that does wrap around and come back here to the crank sensor. But I mean, they're, they're not complaining about the engine shutting down on them, I don't think. I don't think. I'm just gonna use this pry bar. 
And I'm going to touch the harness in different spots where I see some contact points. While I'm watching my 5 volt raft on my scan tool. Right on the corner of this starter, that harness. Like laying right there. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm looking for, that kind of thing. And I don't know that that's the harness. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wiggle that. I'm going to kind of push it against the starter and while I'm watching the 5 volt ref and see if I can see it drop out on me. But that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, man. You know, when I'm doing, when I'm doing harness inspections, that's what I'm looking for. This is where safety wise, like I want to reach my hand up there and I know I've gotten grief for wearing my ring. But one thing I would never do is put, reach my hand up to an area, especially right by a starter motor that has a hot wire all the time. So I am conscious of the ring. You guys need to be aware if you're wearing jewelry, you know, the issue with cars in general is not electrocution. It's that ring touching something hot, like a battery post on a starter and then touching ground and it will get white hot before I can even pull my hand away and it'll, it'll literally burn uh, a ring, the ring into my finger. So I believe I found the crank sensor. I think that's my crank sensor because that's going into the block. The sensor that's above the starter looks more like a knock sensor and this, I think that's it. So I'm gonna check that harness real close now. So this harness, can you see it? Yeah. That's the, for the crank sensor, what I generally do when I'm looking at harnesses is I'll push it against the metal that it's been riding on. I don't pull it away and start looking at it. To try to recreate faults, those are keys. And if you can recreate it, then you can get more aggressive and look at it. But that's the kind of stuff I'm doing initially. See if I can make it drop. Oh, right on the corner of that starter, it's robbing too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right on that corner, right there. Can I get a witness? It's this one right, right there, that one right there. Okay, got it. It's laying right on the corner of the starter motor. And that goes to my crank sensor. But it's in a spot I can't really get to. I mean, shit. that should not be riding there, but it's too far away for, for me to see. I'm not able to move it in a way to short it. There might not be a short there. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you this is it. I just need to prove it. I mean, it doesn't get any more classic than that. And again, that's that harness that was not attached up top. And unfortunately, I reattached it. So this, that's where I um, didn't follow my own rule. And, and that's don't move anything until you visualize all contact points. I've, I say this so many times. It was stupid. Why did I do that? <sighs> Why is it gotta be up there? I can't get to it. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing, but you know the harness I was going after, so. Okay, I got nothing there. No damage there. Nope. I don't see it. Intermittents, man. Intermittents are not fun. Visual inspection leads us nowhere. We're pretty much done. There's literally nothing that I can do with this car if it does not act up. Without doing a bulletin search, which I did, I have to look again because I was looking for a code number and it did, I did see something with the turbo. Um, I don't know if it said boost pressure or not, but without some kind of bulletin or common problem or this being one someone else has done and and fought so i you know doing some homework would be good i'm just not seeing it and if i can't if i can't duplicate it we can't make a call one thing i didn't look at was the uh brake position uh or uh brake pressure sensor oh shoot i was thinking that was brake pedal sensor was it brake pedal sensor or brake pressure sensor i gotta i have to do a visual on that one Brake pedal pressure sensor. It says on top of brake pedal assembly. Yeah, it just says five volt ref. It's a white and red wire. Okay, yeah, white, red. It is showing on the turbocharger the same color 
uh, the white red wire is my reference. Cool. And then we should have the crank sensor on here it uses a white red as well. They might not because they're externally different wires, but internally the same regulator. Yeah, so they're not using the same color. Lower right rear of engine. I hope that makes sense. So I was, I was looking just because these Mitchell diagrams aren't listed as reference one, two, three, or four, they're just listed as five volt reference. And I noticed that the brake pressure sensor and um, the boost pressure sensor both have the same white red wire, but the crank sensor does not. Brake pedal pressure sensor on top of brake pedal assembly. Okay, I don't know if that's there or not. It's got like six wires. There's nothing to see, nothing to see here. I believe we are done. The brake uh, pedal pressure sensor, um, it is a six wire. And I can see now on this diagram that shows me a dotted line right here around the brake pedal pressure sensor. Dotted line parcel view. Um, it is a six wire sensor. And uh, where the car sits underneath the dash, uh, I can't really get you guys in there to see that. Maybe when we get it back on the ground. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do is one more inspection under the hood in these contact point locations and we'll live to fight another day. Is that the phrase? Cause this ain't it. You know, the other thing too is it can absolutely be one of these sensors that's failing. So I'm surprised that there aren't any uh, customer um, other symptoms it would it would be nice to know because being the crank sensor is on this circuit i have to believe that they're that this engine at least stalled whenever the crank sensor sorted out this has multiple cam sensors so it may be able to run without the crank but it would certainly stall or do something goofy and we just don't have that information right now just doing wiggle inspections here watching scan data Any tips? Nope. 5 volt ref 2 circuit code setting conditions. It says this DTC will set when the ECM dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, there's not really a whole lot else I can do or show anyone. Um, I did as much wiggle testing and visuals as I could. Uh, it's very possible one of these sensors is failing. If I were to put money on any of them, it, it would maybe be the boost pressure sensor only because that's the one that probably has the most heat. I, I think I'm done. I'm just gonna give this back to Danner and have him take a look at it when he gets a chance. I think for now, um, I'm, get, I'm just gonna clear these fault codes out of here. I'll give Danner a call and let him know what we found. Yeah. Possible causes are failed ECM, right? The ECM could be failing on this, or you could have multiple component failures. That would be all those sensors that are on the reference circuit. What's up, man? So the uh, Buick, it's a Buick Encore, I think, Encore, 2014. It was a five volt reference two circuit fault. There's four five volt re uh, regulators on this car. Uh, reference. Yeah, yeah, reference two is the turbo boost pressure sensor slash intake air temp sensor. Um, the brake pedal position uh, or brake pedal pressure sensor, which believe it or not is actually part of the brake pedal assembly. You wouldn't think a pressure you wouldn't think a pressure sensor would be there. I would think a pressure sensor for the brake system would be like part of the hydraulic part, but they're calling it a pressure sensor. Uh, it's a six yeah, watt. I would assume it probably just they call that, but it's how far the yeah, it's more now. of a travel sensor than it would be pressure, but yeah. I, anyway, that's a six wire. So it does more than just the, um, you know, the brake pressure, what they're calling. Um, and then the third one is the crank sensor. Um, I did see uh, on the wiring harness for the crank sensor, which is buried, um, that it was contacting the starter. And I looked real, real close at the harness and I don't see any rub through marks anywhere. Um, there was uh, that same wiring harness 
that runs up and clips onto like the fuel rail and intake manifold was not connected. So someone was there. Um, I put those back in place and um, I checked all contact points that I could and um, I got nothing, man. I got nothing. So I cleared the faults. Well, the light wasn't even on. I, I, I know. My yep. mom told me that after you, after you said you were on your way. I'm sorry. I wouldn't even bother. No, no, that's okay. I mean, we have like an hour and a half of footage here and I'm hoping that that maybe a follow up down the road, you know, when this customer comes back to you, that, that you're able to get me a digital photo or, or we get this thing where, you know, it's acting up. So I, there was, there's only the- Those like three, the, those three. Only th the boost pressure, the, the brake pressure, and the crank sensor. That's it, that's it. Just those three on 5 volt ref two. And now, I would- like I would think would the car run? well exactly what I was just going to say I would think that this customer would have other symptoms when this acts up but a lot of these newer cars uh, can run with the cam sensors alone the uh, you know I don't know what the customers complaints are but you know I had a Hyundai with a crank sensor failure and, and the car would just simply stall one time and then when you'd start it back up, the uh, or it wouldn't stall and the tachometer would quit working, but you could still drive it. Like you wouldn't have any other symptoms and it was a faulty crank sensor. So I don't know if this car is the same. I believe it has two different cam sensors. So is this a four cylinder turbo? A little then? four cylinder turbo GDI, yeah. I've yeah. never messed with the GM one of theirs. Yeah, so wait, a little, is it the one four? It's the one four, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so I don't know, you, as far as you know, the customer didn't have any other complaints, just check engine light, that was it. Yeah, see, I, I don't even know who they are. It was just, you know, Bob took the appointment. Ah, uh, okay, so, this. all right, so listen, I, I'm gonna, I have you recorded now. This is kind of our final part for this right now. Um, but I'm hoping that we were able to, you know, have this customer come back and, and um, but at least you can let them know, look, we looked at it, we did everything we could and there's no way that we're prepared to throw a sensor at this, you know? Or a computer, it could be a faulty engine computer and there's, there's just no way to know right now without it doing it. And, and I did the best I could. Um, yeah, so when I, call, when I talk to him, I need to ask him, were there any other symptoms? Did it stall first or anything weird before this happened? I'm sure with a five volt ref two going down, it would have at least hiccuped without, with losing that crank signal, I would think, yeah. I would think it would give you a hiccup, but either way, even if they say yes, that doesn't really put us any closer than where we are. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, which one is it? It needs to be worse. And a momentary glitch or dropout in one of these three sensors and or the computer itself is gonna be really, really hard to prove if it only lasts for a second. So when I checked the freeze frame data, for example, freeze frame data showed me 150 degrees of engine temperature, like 70 some degrees outside temperature, and so they hadn't been driving it long, but my reference voltages, which were actually part of the, um, the freeze frame data, which I was surprised to see, they were all at five volts. They were all at five, even though it was flagging, it, flagging the code. It said five volt reference circuit two fault. It said, you know, the fault was there, but the reference voltage was at five. By the time, uh, so in other words, by the time the snapshot was taken, the the five volt reference short was no longer there and according to the diagram it ha it has to happen for longer than a half a second so half a second and you said someone was in the harness somewhere up higher yeah well I don't, I don't know what they were doing but the harness was not in its proper place there were two u-shaped clips that the harness should have been sitting in that does extend down to the crank sensor and so i i moved that harness just a little bit just put it back in its place and you know, there might be something down in there that was rubbing that I missed, um, but I checked it as close as I could, man. I could see nothing. I was excited to see the wires rubbing on the starter for a little bit. I'm like, dude, that's it. And, and you know what? It very well may, may still be because I can't really get my head close enough to see. You know, I'm within about a foot or so from that harness and it's just buried. And, um, but anyway, uh, it, it would be nice to know too, when we give this back to the customer, um, how often it was happening before compared to how often it's about to happen for the next week or so. Because once once you move a harness, it takes time for everything to settle back in place if it, if it was touching. For sure. So, but at least you have info that you can give to your customer. I'm not even gonna bother driving it again, Danner. I, I've, I've got enough time in, in this and I'm, I'm, I'm a little discouraged that we don't have an answer and 
I don't want to drive it anymore. So just try to, when you talk to the customer, encourage them to drive it, pay attention how often it does it. And then also what symptoms there are, or any driving conditions too, if it's raining out or, you know, just stuff like that to help guide us. All right, well, keep us posted and we'll keep, uh, we'll keep you guys posted. This is gonna be the final part. I'm talking to the camera right now. The final part for now, uh, we'll see where this takes us. Um, hopefully you guys picked up something from this. I'm sure there's a few tips along the way that you did and hoping, hoping for an update here. All right, thanks, Danner. All right, man.